Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Jessica Sill from Tether Tools. I am joined by two very good friends and colleagues, Will Prentice from Amplis, who is our local partner in Canada. Hopefully that's where you purchase your gear from, well, through their partners. And then, of course, the star of the show, Giancarlo Powalik. I like to call him GC. That's how I refer to him. Um, we're going to get started in just a few minutes, give everyone time to tune in. If you don't mind, just drop it a note in the chat. Let us know where you're coming from. We've already got a friend in Belgium. Great to meet you. Thanks for being here. And uh, we're excited for today. We got Gore from Canada. Hi, Trevor. Oh, Richard Cook's here. Nice. From South Africa. What's up, Richard? All right. GC, are you nervous? I'm good. You're I've, good. I've, I've done this presentation like a hundred times. It's like second nature. No, should be good. Should be a good time. I'm excited. I'll say this beats better than speaking behind a mask. So, <laughs> yeah. Hey, where's your Tetherbot shirt? Oh, I I have it at home. I was I was debating if I should wear that one or this one. Sure. And the major's like, wear the official one. I'm like, okay, I'll wear the official one. The wife trumps you. It's true. It's true. See, okay. I got my nice little setup here and everything. I dig it. I dig it. Yeah, I haven't gotten my Tetherbot shirt yet, but next time we'll be twins. Twinsies. Oh, we're just like I'm wearing the other Tether Tool shirt. Nice. GC was born ready. <laughs> Nicole. Thank you, Nicole. I appreciate that. Nicole, you're supposed to make him nervous. <laughs> and then Reese is there. Hello, Reese. That's awesome. It's a great crowd today. Should be good. Oh, Richard's in the bot one. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Oh, you bought one. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Come on, peoples. Excellent, excellent. And just in case anyone, if you have to leave early or if you miss any part of the show today, we are recording it and uh, Will will be distributing it out to everyone um, post event. So do not worry. You will be able to, he's going to be teaching so much great information. You probably will want to rewatch it to capture some additional notes. That's right. All right. Guess, it goes without saying, follow Tether Tools on Instagram at Tether Tools. At Tether Tools. That's right. Follow Giancarlo on, on Instagram at, at Powellek Pal Photo. Powellek Photo. I keep yeah. saying your last name wrong. That's all right. Powellek. Powellek. And it's I, funny because there's people that call me like Powell or Powellek. And I'm like, that's my, that's my last keep, name. I keep calling you Powellek. Powellek. Oh, Powellek. It's supposed to be Pavelic. Pavelic. Yeah, because it's, it's Polish. Yeah, no, it's Polish. Polish. Okay. So the W is like a, it's like one of those like weird W's with like a thingy in it. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's also a German, that's a very German thing, also. Like um in America, we'll say, or Canada, you say Wiener Schnitzel. Right. Wiener Schnitzel. Wiener Schnitzel. Wiener Schnitzel. I don't know why I just thought of that because that's the word. God, now I'm hungry. Okay, we're talking food. All right. Uh, I'm just like, oh, I want a schnitzel. Oh, man, it's bad. I know schnitzel actually sounds really good. I'm pregnant. I can have those cravings. That's right. Anyway, let's get started. Hey everyone, okay. welcome. My name is Jessica Sill from Tether Tools. I'm super excited for all of you to be here with us today. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I'm joined by our two of my good friends and colleagues, Will Prentice from Amplis. He's our local partner in Canada. He is the guy that makes Tether Tools possible for all of you in Canada. And then of course, the man, the myth, the Giancarlo. <laughs> oh, there's Will. <laughs> like Partridge family, we gotta do, uh, do the whole like looking at each other thing, you know? <laughs> Giancarlo awesome, will awesome. be talking to you today about why Tether plays an essential role within his workflow, but that's not all he's gonna go over. He's gonna go over just his workflow in general and his approach to photography. So without further ado, GC, please take it away. Awesome, awesome. Well, thank you, Jessica. And uh, thank you to everyone for joining. Let me see if I can start uh, sharing some goodness. And if, obviously, if you have any questions, uh, if you put them in the chat, I won't be able to see them necessarily, uh, but I'll try and do a little Q&A right after. Again, we got some gear here as well. So let's begin. 
There we go. All right. Beautiful folks. There we go. All right. Well, hello and uh, welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for joining. I appreciate this. Uh, my name, as you may have known already, is Giancarlo Paolek, most known me as GC, and I'm an editorial and commercial photographer based here in beautiful Toronto, Canada. Whether it be a simple portrait session or a commercial job, I firmly believe that unbounded creativity is often the result of working closely with clients and collaboratively with my team or the team. I'm going to start quickly by talking about some creativity and inspirational things. Um, and to start, obviously, is the first part, which is turning a passion into a career. And I'll give you a little Coles notes as to myself. Um, I'd like to start also just with this quote because I think it's hilarious. But if you can read it, it says, if you have to support yourself, you had bloody well find, <laughs> better, you better find some, uh, some way that is going to be interesting. So... Catherine Hepburn, very, very true. To begin, I began my self-taught career about two decades ago with automotive and motorsports, uh, editorials across North America, before I moved into portraiture, fashion work, and commercial work, which is what I'm known for now. As an avid gearhead, basically anything that has an engine and wheels, I started by photographing local car clubs, cruises, meetups, car shows, and of course, racing events. I've been fortunate enough to shoot some incredible racing series, ranging from the Porsche Cup, the American Le Mans series, and Verac, which is the vintage series, to more grassroots events like CSCS, Ontario Time Attack, and others. The smell of race fuel, the sound of cars, being pushed to the limit and drivers battling it out at every turn is truly amazing to experience. If you ever get a chance to go to a local track, absolutely do so. There's nothing like it. The only downside with motorsports photography is that come rain or shine, racing happens. So you always have to be prepared. As you can see in the images, <laughs> got rained out quite a bit. By pushing my passion to the limit, I was given my first assignment from a magazine at the time called Sport Compact National, or SCN. The assignment was to shoot a 1972 Datsun 510 that had a motor swap and was fully rebuilt using two donor cars. The result was an incredible yellow beast of a machine that I photographed in a cemetery, I know, cheesy, entitled the car, in the feature rather, Reincarnation. And thankfully, it ended up being my first national magazine cover. I was 18 or 19 years old, I believe. Shortly after that milestone, I was able to shoot on contract for many of the leading publications across North America and Europe. Here are just some of the examples and the covers. We got covers from France. We got covers from, I believe, the US or the UK. Uh, and then, of course, some in Canada. Since then, my focus shifted from editorial and print work to commercial for brands like Jaguar, Land Rover, Porsche, and others. My passion is still fueled by these incredible machines of power and finesse. However, artistically, I've become a lot more concise with my output. It is commercial work after all. Looking back at the years, I would have never imagined that I'd be here. What started off as a hobby, quickly turned into a passion and has granted me a career path, which I love. Who would have thought that one day, that one day I'd be photographing a 575 horsepower Jaguar F-Type SVR in the posh area of Yorkville here in Toronto with a team of 10 and the confidence of a client in my vision for the project. Take risks and persevere. If photographs are strong, they will find their audience sooner or later. Later is not necessarily a bad thing. 
it leaves more time for making the photographs, which after all is everything. That's from Paul Kulechi, uh, who was an American documentary photographer, talented photographer as well. I thought the quote resonated well with this segment about taking risks and persevering. It won't be the first or the last person to say this, but keep shooting. The more you do, the more you hone your craft and your creative vision. Remember, nothing good has come from simple efforts. These are some of my favorite shots, but believe it or not, these shots are about six to eight years old and I've since progressed, thankfully. For most photographers, especially getting into fashion work, they often seek to photograph women. However, I focus mostly on men. There's a smaller pool of models and photographers, but to me, it was mainly due to taking on that challenge. Men are often seen as rugged or very stoic. I choose to work with male models and push the boundaries of their looks, and by doing so, taking risks. Throughout the years, I've been able to hone my creative vision. I've described my style as a signature style blending an edgy feel with vibrant colors. Here are some of my favorites from a few years ago. And here is more recent work. With each project I take on, be it paid or creative, I try to push forward, be it with my lighting, creative vision, and workflow. The images and workflow that I produce now far outweigh those of the past but only because of the risk that I took and continue to take, as should you. Keep learning and always evolve. Here's a wonderful quote from Elliot Erwitz, who's an advertising photographer. He's still alive. Um, to me, photography is an art of observation. It's about finding something interesting in an ordinary place. I found it has little to do with the things you see and everything to do with the way you see them. Let that sink in for a minute. I saw this tweet a few days ago and I had to take a screenshot and share it, especially for this webinar. Um, we are talking about to keep learning and to keep evolving. So here's Jerry Saltz, who's a senior art critic. Uh, he also won a 2018 Pulitzer Prize in criticism. I don't think you could do that, but it's true. And the tweet says, artists, never try to guess what your audience wants. Your audience doesn't know what it wants until after they see it. Who knew they would want to see a large Pollock canvas splattered with dripping paint, with drip paint? Here's the example, what he's talking about. It's called Number Five by Jackson Pollock. Um, I laugh just because personally, who would have thought there'd be a value to that? I'm certainly not a fan to each their own, of course. But this painting by Jackson Pollock sold for $140 million. It is a record, but always remember that there's an audience for everything you do. So keep producing the images that you want to see. Keep persevering, keep evolving, keep learning. Believe it or not, my first full dive into fashion photography was runway work. Sure, it isn't glamorous, but it quickly taught me the reality of that world. It's an energy ball of chaotic madness. The best part of shooting the runway was being able to connect with many of the industry leaders and also understand how fashion itself sells. As a photographer, you want garments to be flowing, natural looking, but also have that aha moment when you look at it, making you want to buy it and wear it proudly. Now, some of these clothes obviously aren't my style, but you gotta admit, that feathery flock that he's wearing in the middle, it's pretty money. One thing that I'm still trying to hone my skills on, and hone my skills in rather, is my product work. To most, shooting a still object seems easy, but that isn't the case. Similar to automotive, there are reflections and surfaces to contend with before even hitting the shutter button. Unlike fashion photography, 
product is much more slower paced, slower workflow. However, it's all about the details. Here's just a sample of a client of client work that I've done, ranging from delicious food to big brake kits for motorsports and product product box photography for a CBD company here in Canada. Growing as a photographic artist, you always have to keep learning. In the past few years, I've recently fallen back in love with black and white, shot both with natural light and strobe. To some, black and white photography is the most raw form, other than shooting on film, of course, as it removes any influence by way of color. With each and every shoot that I do, I try to incorporate a black and white session in it so that I can continue to evolve my craft. And just might as well mention the shot on the left was shot with two strobes. The shot on the right, entirely natural light. Inspire and propel others' success. Maya Angelou once said, life is not measured by the number of breaths we take, but by the moments that take our breath away. And that couldn't be more true. Inspire and propel others. It's no secret that people do business with people. Simply put, if you do good for others, they will remember and do good to you. Take this model test shoot as an example. She was a new face model named Antonia from a startup agency here in Toronto. The result of this particular shoot got her booked for jobs in Milan shortly right after. That's Milan, Italy. Toronto to Milan. Big move. Her success through these simple images and styling, of course, from a test shoot, put my name on the radar for other agencies. And not just here in Toronto, but overseas as well. She did go to Milan after all, they followed me. Here's another example. It's a men's fashion shoot from a local designer. The concept was just to showcase his suits. Now, I could have just shot them in the studio. It could have been something basic. He probably would have been pleased. However, I took it a step further by requesting that we only use his clients. Yes, real average Joes instead of professional models. The reason behind this was fairly simple. I wanted the shoot to be about Toronto. So I wanted Toronto locations and actual Torontonians. The shoot was shot in one full day with a great team entitled Six in the Six. Now, that's because of six subjects or six models, if you will, six locations across Toronto. Most of these are iconic locations. The one on the top left, as you can see, um, he's a sommelier, a wine sommelier in terms of the client, but this was shot at St. Lawrence Market here in Toronto. The bottom left is of a gentleman, I uh, can't remember his name, Eric, I believe it was, and he's a Toronto actor. Uh, and this was shot, what is now gone, but a place called Honest Ed's, which is a very iconic retailer uh, in Toronto. Uh, and unfortunately, the building got torn down. And the image on the right uh, is from a gentleman, and this was shot outside Castle Loma, which is our only castle, if you will, here in Toronto. Um, so again, all three of them are iconic locations that anyone in Toronto would be like, hey, I know that spot. So for that, I called the six and the six, partially because Toronto, of course, is referred to as a six because of our 416 area code. So again, you could have asked, it could have had a simple concept, simple shoot, but it's taking to that next step. It's pushing the designers, pushing the team that to me at least creates great results. Another example of work that I've done whereby to me at least, it's using creativity and inspiration to draw upon to get these results. Now, some of these obviously are models um, and some of these are test shoots. But again, what I wanna demonstrate with these images is the fact that you don't really need much and you can do things on the simple, on the fly. But it's all those little extras, the little elements that make a difference. 
I could have shot the gentleman on the far left that you can see uh, in the denim, in the Canadian tuxedo, as we like to call it, as is. And this was shot on location. Now, for this, I particularly, I particularly I wanted to use a strobe and a gelled strobe, an orange gelled strobe, just to give it a little extra element. And again, it's all those little details that, that add up. And another final example, to propel and inspire. The gentleman on the, le on the left is now signed with a major agency, but adding to that, um, this was a stylist, a Toronto stylist that reached out to me, uh, and they wanted to do a big editorial fashion shoot, having had no prior experience. So this to me was a bit sketchy and weird at first, um, but I knew that the stylist was very, very talented in what they did. Um, so for this, we sort of put a team together, and now he's quite successful and he's, he's moved on. Um, I think he's actually in LA, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, again, it's these little things of doing good for others uh, that will bring good to you. In my case, it's images, but then also him always remembering who I am. This takes us now into the meat of this webinar. The three principles of tethering and why you're here, of course. Connect, collaborate, and create. Now, to connect means to create an efficient workflow solution, be it in the studio or on location. Everything from file transfer to rigging and even battery power. Collaborate. Well, from working with small teams to a full-scale production. Collaboration is key to any creative aspiration. Now, everyone is a part of the solution. And lastly, to create. With a streamlined workflow, and creative input of others, including clients. As part of the process, the results are endless possibilities. Let's dive deeper. Tethering 101. Simple question, but what is tethering? Tethering is basically the ability to connect your camera, DSLR, mirrorless, medium format, to a computer through software. And this can be done either wired or wirelessly. What do you need to get started? Very simple. A Tether Pro cable, one of these, and software. You could also use a wireless transmission device and a software or app. Things to consider, of course, are the cable types. Now, the reason I say this is because there are so many variations nowadays Unfortunately, things aren't very universal. Uh, but the best way to know which cable is right for you is to visit the main site, which is tethertools.com, and they have an awesome configuration tool there. You just put in what your camera is. You can see there your manufacturer, your model of your camera, and then your computer port, whether it be USB-A, USB-C, and the like. So why tether? After all that, you're still left asking the question, why shoot tethered? Well, Tether has many benefits, many workflow benefits, everything from creative benefits to technical benefits. And as the saying goes, you don't know until you try. When is tethering essential? The answer is fairly simple, always. As soon as my camera comes out of the bag, so does my Tether Pro cable or AirDirect depending on what I'm shooting and where I'm at. Whether I'm in a studio, whether I'm outside on the location, tethering is an essential part of my workflow. It doesn't matter if I'm in the co cozy confines here or at a client-selected location, as long as I got my tether tools gear, I'm good to go. Here's a great example of why tethering is beneficial. Simply put, without tethering, I wouldn't be able to see many things, including the eyes being in focus. Keep in mind, her hair is covering her eyes. Now, I wanted this specifically. I wanted this look. But without tethering, I'd be risking it or ultimately taking a thousand shots in the hopes of one is what I want. For this particular shoot, I used three strobes, all of which were gelled. Now, dialing the lighting setup, I wanted for it to look almost futuristic in a sense. 
but also setting up these lights because they're gelled usually takes a lot longer to do. Thankfully, it only took me about five minutes. I took a test shot for every light that I set up until I got the look that I wanted from it. Shut it off, took another test shot, and continued, so on and so forth. My favorite saying, of course, from subjects and clients is setting up the shot takes time. Taking the shot takes a fraction of a second. Ooh, the fun stuff. Workflow. Well, let's get into it. What is workflow? Simply put, workflow is one's process from start to finish, or for us photographers, from a creative vision to the final output. Here's the process, if you will, or workflow. You usually start with an inspiration. So what inspires you? Is it a song, a movie, a fellow artist? Jot that down. Next step is the concept. You're broadening your inspiration and unifying a theme. So is it a particular fashion brand? Is it a particular color? Is it a particular lens? Do you just want to shoot everything wide open? Do you want to shoot a fisheye lens? Next step, of course, in the workflow in the process is mood board. Very, very crucial. Simply put, you put images together and you outline specific theme of the concept and how you want to achieve it from all parties, whether it be from the stylist, from a makeup artist, from yourself, from the lighting itself. Next up is the call sheet. Very, very crucial, but it's the details about the shoot, the contact info, the date, the time, the location, the address. Following that, the team. Very, very crucial, th this. Who are the best people to execute this concept? Now, that could be either based on their technical ability and their experience, or it could be their creative vision. It could be even a combination of both. And this applies to everything from assistants to the models that you hire or you have, to the stylist, to the makeup artist, the hairstylist, anyone and everyone involved. Gear and setup. So what gear are you gonna be using to get the job done? What do you need to bring? Do you not need to bring anything because you're shooting in a studio? There's things, uh, these are the things you have to sort of consider as part of the workflow and as part of the process. The next step is what I think is the fun part, which is the shoot itself, the day of. Next is post-process or editing as we know. And final is the result, the output, the file. Here's an example of a workflow um, from a recent shoot. I can't unfortunately disclose many of the images because uh, it's uh, it's being published or is published. But just to get you know get you a little little taste of it, um, the concept of the inspiration was this video game that came out called Cyberpunk 2077, which many of you might know, might not know, um, despite all the glitches it has. But uh, I always thought it was cool to sort of be sort of futuristic. I thought the game and the visuals were great, and that to me was the inspiration. The concept or the conception behind that was pretty much using lighting to tell the story. Instead of the models, instead of the clothing, it was lighting that was going to give it that edge, that cyberpunk feel. The mood board, obviously, you can see on the top right, and that gives you an idea of the lighting that I liked, the posing that I liked, as well as also gave the idea of the fashion and the clothes. Now the mood board is essential as part of the workflow for everybody to be on the same page. You know, you could always say, oh, I want to do a cyberpunk shoot, but that can mean anything from really dark and morbid to very poppy and bright. How do you get everybody on the same page? Mood board. Then we have the call sheet, of course, rounding up the team or the troops, setting up. And here's a little behind the scenes shot you can see in the bottom right or bottom left, sorry, uh, which is you know one of the setups for the shot. Of course, I'm tethering uh, into Capture One. And the benefit of that, of course, is it being on a much larger monitor, a 27 inch monitor, everybody in the team can see things in real time. Now, keep in mind, there was a lot of finessing of the light as well as the clothing because I'm trying to get a very exact look. 
Um, you can see a quick screenshot on the right of some of the selects from that shoot. So you can see we're using gobos, we're using smoke or fog, uh, a lot of elements. We literally, it's from, from hair and makeup being a certain way and having to be a certain way because of the light that's being projected to the way I'm shooting, to the angles that I'm shooting. There's a lot of variables. And over time, of course, having started in automotive and not in fashion, my workflow has improved. It's become a lot more efficient. Tethering has been a very, very crucial part of that because what you can't see, you don't really know. Here's a great example. Uh, this is a shoot. Uh, let's look a little behind the scenes goodness. So as a diehard gearhead, I mentioned before, I've always wanted to shoot men's fashion with cars and motorcycles. All well, that day finally came. Flashback to 2018 when I shot the Lucky Number fashion editorial on location in downtown Toronto for Huff Magazine. It was a crisp day. Custom cafe motorcycles were rolled out and our team was pumped. However, we only had a limited amount of time and to be at this exclusive spot before we got kicked out. So we had to make the best of it. Thanks to an efficient tether workflow and a seamless collaborative effort with the team that included five models, a fashion stylist, a makeup artist, hairstyles, vehicle handler, videographer, assistants. We we're in and out within a few hours and able to get a total of seven sets for the multiple page spread. All these things make a difference. When you can turn your creative vision into reality, that is what I call success. <laughs> what a good shoot. I love that shoot. All right, so tether workflow, technical benefits. Here's a few, let's mention them. Check focus. Now I know most mirrorless cameras now have the funky IAF, they can do it. My R5 has it, I love it. I think it's cheating, but I love it. Um, but it allows you to check focus. Now if you can shoot with vintage lenses. You can shoot with cameras that don't have IAF. And again, it's very, very crucial. There's nothing worse then being like, oh, I got the shot, you're pumped, you go home or you go wherever, and you plug it in, you upload the shots, and it's soft. It's not sharp. There's nothing worse than that. And if you're talking about commercial work, well, I hate to say it, but you'll never get hired again. Another benefit, of course, composition and lighting. Knowing what you want and how to get it. You can compose a shot, you can adjust the shot, you can take test shots to set up your lighting. All that is done in real time because of tethering. You don't have to rely on a tiny little screen on the back of the camera to tell you if you're on it or not. File management and safety. Very, very, very crucial. Um, I say this because when you tether, it saves on the hard drive of the computer that you're tethering to. And I will always say that a hard drive is far more reliable than any memory card. Now granted, memory cards have come a long way, but I'll take my SSD and my Mac over a CF Express or any other card really at the end of the day. So knowing that it's there, it's great because it also allows you to do immediate backups. Now I know Richard Cook is here for example and he's, he's a great Digitech and he'll tell you, backing up is the most crucial thing, especially after a shoot. Next point, color profiles and color correction. Again, because you're shooting tethered, everything is done in real time. You want to make an adjustment on exposure. You want to lift up the shadows. You want to crop in. You want to see if you can get three different crops from the same file. You can. There's no more guessing game anymore. And ultimately, capture in camera. Now, yes, I'm old school, but I believe that getting it right in camera is key. It will make life so much easier. Imagine this, the fact that you can do a full day of shoot. Let's call it eight hours. Even if you're a novice, you're shooting eight hours, you're taking hundreds of photos. But now, in a matter of time, you can call the image, you can edit the image, you can tweak things to sort of what you want in the vision. You don't have to worry about contact sheets or emails. There's no guessing game. It's all done in real time. Example two, 
This image is of a Canadian actor and the lead of CBC here in Canada, a show called Murdoch Mysteries. The actor's name is Yannick Besson, and this was shot for Porsche, or Porsche Canada. Now, the concept of, of this was simply a day in the life of. And this particular shot, believe it or not, took only 15 minutes to set up until I was pleased with the scene. For this shot, I only used two strobes, one of the actor and one on the vehicle. Now, dialing in the lighting, so it took only a matter of minutes and a mere seven test shots until I had the look that I wanted. Balancing the ambient and the bright ambient lights of the outside, it was a very bright sunny day, and that of the subject. Now, thanks to Tether's workflow, I was able to collaborate with the team on set. That's the art director, hair makeup artist, even Yannick, the actor itself, and scout three locations on the property, complete three sets of different images, and on the final retouched images turned over to the client within 72 hours. Now granted, I wasn't busy in the next two days, but having an efficient workflow, having an efficient tethered workflow, literally allowed me to cut a lot of time. I could take a shot and go to the art director or the client and say, is this what you're visioning? Is this what you think? You have to see if my vision and their vision comes together. And they can say, oh, yes, no, the angle's right. It's too bright. It's too dark. Whatever the case is, I don't like the shirt he's wearing. But it's all done in real time. So there's no guessing game. And ultimately, when you're dealing, in this case, for example, with an actor, a well-known actor, time is money. You got to get in. You got to get out. They have busy things to do. Having an efficient tether workflow made me do it, made me get the shot. Tether workflow creative benefits. Ooh, this is fun. So here's just a few benefits. Precision styling. Now I was mentioning earlier that cyberpunk shoot that I did, or even the Porsche shoot with Yannick Besson, the actor. But precision styling is very, very key. There's nothing worse, at least to me, than taking a shot of, let's say, a model, everything you think looks great, and then you see it on screen and, you know, the hair is here, or, or the hair is right above the eye, or the color's all droopy. With a tether workflow, I can legitimately put the camera down and go to the styles and go, you can see the color, or you can do this, or you can adjust this. Or the hair makeup can jump in and go, oh, I see the hair, or I see the, you know, the, the, the makeup is running. Precision styling in terms of getting everything done in camera. There's no waiting, there's no relying on post-production and editing. Yes, you can fix it in Photoshop, fix it in post. God, that's photographer's worst, worst line ever that we, we hate hearing. Fix it in post. You don't have to. Fix it in real time. Get it right in camera. Let post do the, 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 the massaging at the end, if you will. Another great point is subject coaching and posing adjustments. Now, unless you're dealing with a celebrity, an actor, uh, a, a professional model that's experienced, sometimes coaching and posing is very crucial. Everyone, including myself, we tend to sort of slouch. How much easier is it to take a shot and then say, okay, like as I like to say, put a pin on top of your head, straighten that spine. Just standing up, take a shot, show the client, show the person. They can see the drastic difference in real time. So there's a there's a method to your madness, if you will. So what you're saying, because it looks good behind behind the camera, you can see things. Most people don't know what, what they're doing, what they look like. Lighting adjustments. I touched base on that earlier, but again, doing finite adjustments on lighting or setting up your lighting in general just by test shots. I don't own a light meter. Don't think I ever will, but I don't need to. I tether. I can see things in real time. Image review and sharing. Very, very crucial, especially when you're dealing with a bunch of people. Everyone can have a piece of the pie, can look at it. Uh, and they can all give their input, of course, right? Part of that is also the fact that you can call the images in real time. You mark them, you add the stars, however your, your system is for creating the images. And there you go. You've done the brunt of the job. And lastly, team, including the client, collaboration. So collaboration is very, very key to me, at least, in making the magic happen. Everyone's input, everyone's experience, everyone's influence, really makes a, 
a shot stand out, make it, make a shot a lot better than it could be. And part of that is also clients. A lot of people, we tend to sort of forget the clients as part of the process or the, the workflow process, but clients are very, very crucial. Another example, example number three. So as an example of workflow, a makeup artist will look at their work with a critical eye. Sometimes that I may have not noticed, not due to my inexperience in makeup. I'm not a makeup guy. But it would be merely picked up by the makeup artist, like perfectly even tonality on the smoky eye. Now you can see the shot here, the model on the left. Keep in mind, these are not retouched. But the model on the left is the same model as one on the right. The crop is just zoomed in, I think, at 100% or 200%. Now, again, from afar, I might see it be happy with it. But a makeup artist might not want their name attached to the image if it's not the best work that they can do. Here, we stop the process. He or she goes up and says, okay, I need to adjust this. I need to do this, move this. I don't like the way this looks, whatever the case is. And then we continue. No time wasted. No shots wasted. Now, although us photographers consider ourselves to be the conductors of the orchestra, we are in fact just a piece of the multi-talented band. Now, each member adds their flair and their solo when needed for the overall good of the tune, or in this case, the image. What gear do I use? Now, I get this question 100 times, and I will answer it now. The answer is simple. Depends on the job. And it depends on the end result that I'm trying to achieve, whether it be for myself or the client. Regardless of location, be it in the cozy confines of my hard loft studio or out in the field, so long as I have my gear and my tether tools gear, I'm good. Now, some questions I ask myself before I gear up for any shoot. Am I shooting something fast paced like fashion? or slower like product. What matters most for the project? Is it resolution, output speed, discretion? Will I be in my studio or out in the field, AKA on location? Each and every answer must be taken into consideration before packing. Now, having spent many years shooting a variety of subject matters and traveling, there's one thing I can say for certain. The old adage of it's better to have and not need than need and not have is very true. Take my word for it and always be prepared. Specifically, my go-to setup. The camera of choice, of course, for me is the Canon EOS R5. Um, I used to be a 1DX shooter. I still have them here. Um, but I love the R5, great camera. I tend to have, I tend to use either the 24 to 105 or the 7200 millimeter lens, again, depending on what I'm shooting. My Tether Tools USB-C right angle cable or the USB-C cable from Tether Tools in particular, I absolutely love. That is with me all the time. And with that, the Tether Block, which is what secures underneath. Uh, my go-to laptop, of course, is the i9 MacBook Pro but you can use any laptop or any computer for that matter. It doesn't even have to be a laptop. Capture 121 is my software choice and bronze color strobes, various depending on the job. So cable types and considerations. Now, regardless of what type of port you have, there is a cable for it. I nowadays have a few of each, partially because some things are USB-A, and some things are USB-C. And personally, I hate dongles. But it's also better to be safe than sorry. So I'd rather have a backup in case I ever need it, in case someone trips on it. Who knows? In case it gets misplaced. It's always good. Plus, I have different cameras, different systems, different outputs. My favorite is the AirDirect, this little guy. It's a wireless tethering system. Now, it was new, newly debuted about a year ago or so, but it's simply something out of the fantasy book. 
Now, never before has there been a tethering solution that is not only wireless, but it's responsive and it's robust and it has a mobile app. Doesn't get easier than that. Every major camera brand is also supported, including Canon, Nikon, Fujifilm, Hasselblad, Phase, etc. What gear do I use? Tether Block. I love the Tether Block. Actually, I think I have the Tether Block Arca, um, but I love the Tether Block. The main reason I love it is it secures the cable. It prevents it from being yanked out. It's also great because with the Tether Block Arca, I can just fit it on Arca mount. I don't need any other adapter or plates. Now, it also removes all movement from the cable port, which is very, very crucial. So that way you don't jiggle it. Now, keep in mind, especially with the R5, uh, it's a USB-C port. It is very, very expensive to repair. Thankfully, I haven't had any issues. But having that tether block underneath, literally just sort of bolted down, literally will secure the cable from moving. It works wonderful with right angle cables as well as straight cables. There's two choices for the USB-C. And there's a small, medium, large cable route underneath, depending on the type of cable or the size. The other piece of gear that I love is a jerk stopper. Now, I tend to have that on my bigger body cameras, but I love it because it's very simple. It's essentially a little cable with plastic clips, for lack of better words but it ensures the cable stays in. Now it's very similar to the tether block in that it ensures the cable stays in. However, the big difference being is the tether block is almost of a permanent fixture, if you will, because it's done at the bottom plates of the camera. This you can obviously undo very quickly if you want to pack. But the cool thing about this is the safety quick release. So you can see there that says seven PSI at seven pounds of pressure, the quick release will go. Now, what that means is, God forbid this happens to you, but it does happen sometimes. You have a cable, you're shooting, and someone unfortunately trips over the cable. Now again, if you have like the R5 with a USB-C, that is an expensive, expensive repair. In this case, seven PSI, cable pops out, it's released, bingo, bango, no issues, no port damage. The other final piece of gear that I use and I love is my pro tethering kit. And we can see over there. So the pro tethering kit comes with a tether table arrow or the master. That is the master and much larger one, a non-slip pro pad. So you can put your laptop on top, uh, an external drive solo. So you can put your external drive, of course, for backing up a secure strap hooks, a cup holder, very essential, especially for coffee. Um, there's a jerk stopper clip on there for camera support. So you actually clip it on a strap more case and other goodies. Very, very useful. Whether you're in the studio or on location, I tend to use it when I'm on location because I'm in the studio. I have a hundred tables here. Uh, but literally when I'm on location, it is the most portable, easiest thing to do. And that doesn't mean location doors. I've taken this in the middle of a field and it's phenomenal. Software for tethering. Now, of course, there's many debates on this as to which software is better. And it truly comes down to your workflow and your preference. Everybody is different. Now, the main two industry standard pieces of software are Adobe's Lightroom and Capture One Pro. I personally use Capture One Pro. Since I started tethering in the early 2000s, I was always a fan of Adobe Lightroom until recently, of course, in the last few years. And for the past few years, I've switched to Capture One Pro and I have not looked back. It is phenomenal with its raw to JPEG converter, but its stable platform for tethering is absolutely phenomenal. I can't recommend it enough. The three principles of tethering again, connect, collaborate, and create. Just so everyone's on the same page, connect is to create an efficient workflow solution from file transfer to rigging and even battery power. Collaborate is from working with small teams or full-scale productions. Collaboration is key to any creative aspiration. Everyone can be part of the solution. And lastly, create the streamlined workflow and creative input of others, including clients, can't forget them. As part of the process, the results are endless. 
One of my favorite things about being a professional photographer is that I get paid to meet and work with some incredible people. Each project is different and so are the experiences. I wrote here, more heads are better than one. And it really is true. We all have a vision. We all have a starting point. But it's the influences and the people around us that help navigate and steer that vision. For me, having a workflow or a Tether Tools workflow in particular allows me to focus on the magic moment. Capturing that one frame within 10, that 10 frames within 100 that really sits with you, that resonates with you. In relation to the workflow, every single part of the team, hair, makeup artists, stylists, assistants, producers, art directors, name it. They all have an input in making the image turn from a vision to reality. As photographers, we sometimes can't express what's in our head. And thus working collaboratively with a team, anything truly, again, is possible, including most importantly, a fresh set of eyes. Before I wrap up, I just want to take one more look at a behind the scenes video I did. Now, as a thank you gift to Bram of Shredded Chrome, he was the motorcycle builder and handler for the men's fashion shoot that I did on location uh, for that lucky number fashion shoot. I wanted to capture him in his home base garage where he makes these two wheel gems. Now, unknown to me prior to the shoot, bad on me, the garage space was small, like really, really small. Even a crew of four of us could barely fit in. Hashtag no bueno. <laughs> the challenge was to not only in how to set the scene with him, his motorcycle and the work tools, but also how is ever going to get the light on it or light the scene let alone photograph it with not much room to move. Thankfully, my tether workflow and having the essential tools for the job made it possible. Utilizing the tether pro cable into the camera and shot through capture one software on a MacBook pro. I was able to dial in each gel at a time until I got the shot I was looking for. I then incorporated the fog machine to enhance the ambience from the gel. There you go. The right tools for the right job always creates a winning combination. There you go. What you photograph, find your passion and follow it. Now I'll end my presentation with a favorite quote of mine, which is my truly favorite quote. You can even see it on my website. And it's from a photographer named Alfred Stegels. And it says, in photography, there's a reality so subtle that it becomes more real than reality. Think of that. Thank you all for your time. Be sure to follow me on social media at Powell like photo. And there's a little promo for everyone just in case. If you are interested in saving some money, 10% on all Tether Tools products, you can use my code Giancarlo 10 GP, that's Giancarlo 10 GP at tethertools.ca. So again, it's you save 10% on all Tether Tools products using the code Giancarlo 10 GP at tethertools.ca. Awesome. That was awesome. Thank you so much, GC. No worries. It was great. I always love watching you present. And Trevor, thank you so much for joining the Tether Tools family. Um, he used to not shoot tethered until he until you so put him onto it. Good. So. I'm, I'm glad to hear it. it it's it, it. I just. It's funny. It's funny to mention, but because it, it's like a lot of people are very hesitant, and I think part of the hesitancy is just because people aren't aware or aren't exposed to it. Um, but like I said earlier, like once you try it, once you understand tether. You literally, you realize why you, you, you question yourself why you haven't done it before because it just makes life so much easier. You know, I talk to photographers all the time that I go, like, oh, I took 20,000 shots, and I'm like, 20,000 shots? 
That's like so I'm, I'm lucky if I hit 800 shots and they're like, well, well why? Cause I can see it. I'm not wasting time. You know, yeah. my, my 800 shots might not be as great, but, but I know exactly it's closer to the vision that I want because that's the whole process has been that way. Right. Absolutely. So, well, I was, um, you know, I live in a small town, so I was at the local Starbucks, as <laughs> local as it gets. But uh, I was wearing, uh, I was wearing my tether tools jacket. And this woman and I were, we were just standing in line and she said, Oh, tether tools. And I was like, Oh, are you familiar with us? She's like, sort of. She's like, but you're the like the first person I've ever, you know, it's not a brand that you see out and about regularly. Right. And I, said, I, I work on their marketing team, blah, 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 whatever. And I said, if you don't mind me asking, if you're not a photographer, what do you do? And she said, I'm a creative director. And I was like, cool. And she told me what company. And um, she said, your products have totally transformed the way that we work with photographers when they come in and capture our products. And she actually said, they won't hire a photographer if they don't shoot tethered capture. And it's because, and this was pre-COVID, this was before COVID was ever even saw the light of day really, but she said it's because we don't want our team crowding a photographer. We don't want to make the model nervous. We, our team sits in the back and we watch the images come up on the monitor and we, and we select the ones that we want right then and there. She said before, you know, tethered photography was a big thing. She said, I remember I used to have to wait for the photographer to go through their images and send me what they thought they liked, but I didn't like. So it was like a constant back and forth thing. And so, you know, for businesses too, for your clients, it totally transforms the way that they work with you. No, absolutely. I mean, it, I mean, it's, it's I, I give the example, but it's true. I mean, I, I well, I guess two years ago, pre pre COVID, um, it, it's it, I shot because uh, I do corporate headshots. I shot 150 corporate headshots in one day, and again, all 150 were turned over within 72 hours. And literally, the clients thought I was, you know, when I took this job, the clients were like, okay, well, this guy, he doesn't want to break it up in three days. No. And then as soon as they understood my workflow, me shooting them, see on the screen, you know, you spend 10 minutes, whatever the case is, they pick their one shot. Literally the client came up to me and said, well, like, do other people do this? And my answer was, unfortunately, no, but it's not rocket science. I mean, you can go to tools.com, buy the same gear and be up and at it. You know what I mean? It's, it's not rocket science, but it saves so much time because their previous experience took weeks they would get contact sheets then email back and forth but then we missed judy and sally's email and then tim and bob didn't get their email done the shot selection is done all you have to do is just wait for the final files yeah you know and so they think i'm a magician meanwhile i'm like it's pretty easy it's not that hard (laughs) you're a walking you're a walking billboard for us and and um a fellow pro and partner down in florida kira dairyberry had a similar scenario. She had to photograph, I think it was, I think it was around a hundred headshots wow. and her client was just blown away because by the end of the day, Kira's work was done. The client had already selected their photos. They had already done in-person sales, like everything was done. And let's, I mean, let's call it spade a spade as photographers, you're not making money unless you're capturing photos. Time is money. Time is money. And mm-hmm. so that time, that that capture really just transforms the way that you're working and 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 how you're working with your clients. So very much so. I, uh, and, and, and even like, I mean, for, for photographers, time is money, but for clients, time is money too. Absolutely. You know, I mean, I, I can't I can't ask, you know boast about the fact of like just having an efficient, fast workflow is incredible because the client appreciates that because the client also doesn't have to waste time or or even guess, you know. Did, did GC get, get, you know, the white t-shirt and white background properly? Or is it really like, you know, off white because, you know, he's not color accurate or what? Any, any here's, of clients. here's real time. You see everything. It says two, five, five, you know, it's, you know, it's pure white, right? Yeah. Like, you know, you're on the one. And, and so they see that and they're like, ah, but they appreciate that. And part of that, like I mentioned earlier is doing good for others brings good to you. Yep, absolutely. And it sounds silly and it sounds very romantic, you know, when it comes to workflow or tether tools, but it's very true. Making someone's life easier, whether it be the model, the agent, the you know, the client, the mom and pop, whoever it is, making someone's life easier and then delivering the results puts you in the in the forefront of their of their mind always. Absolutely, absolutely. And the one time I've seen tethered workflow work not for 
the not necessarily for the client in the sense of seeing the images right away is we have a wedding photographer down in Chicago that we work with. He doesn't show the images as he's capturing them because, well, you know, on a bride special day, they just want to, you know, like they, they want to do other things. They be the but by the end of the night, he's printing out photos for his clients to take away. So he gives three prints at the wedding real for time one for the bride and groom, one for each side of the family. But then he gives them 10 photos each to mm -hmm. upload to social media. And it's like those little things, again, like totally transforms the client experience. I, I eloped, so I don't really have that experience. But I could tell you if I had a wedding, like the ability to upload a photo after my wedding, I hate to say it, but there's going to be my friends and family who couldn't go. It, but, but it's true. It, it's so useful. Um, it, it, it really is. I mean, like I said, I mean, the, the, the proof is in the pudding. Like you really have to just venture and do it to really understand. And it's funny because most people sort of understand tethering or they understand the, the basics of tethering is connecting one thing to another. But when it applies to photography, and again, I think part of the hesitation is people also think when it comes to photography, it has to be a big production or it has to be in a studio or it has to be like, I'd say 80% of the work I do is usually myself and the clients. Yep. I can um, be myself and clients and maybe hair and makeup. And that's it. Um, so you don't need these big productions. And it doesn't matter if you're shooting you know, if you're shooting a, a, a mouse or you're shooting, you know, a baby or you're shooting, you know, a million dollar ring, it doesn't matter. You know, absolutely. Uh, so Reese, that's a great question. Uh, an iPad or wireless transfer for clients. If you are using the Capture One software, which is what GC uses, there's a there's a sub software is what I call it. It's called Capture One Pilot that you download onto a surface, um, some sort of tablet or mobile device that you're tethering into your computer. And those images are automatically ending up on the mobile device that can be with your clients. So this way, your clients are not surrounding your computer, potentially tripping over your equipment. And they're kind of out of your personal space. So it's called Capture One Pilot. I'm not entirely there, sure if Lightroom and then, has yeah, like it, I, I don't know if, if Lightroom has. I know Capture One also, the new Capture One uh, has pilot beta that's built into it, mm -hmm. which is pretty crazy because you can literally shoot and then you copy and paste a link and you can email that link and they and they see in real time and they can rate it and it, it's, it's that, pretty bananas. Now, is that even um, when they're not on location? Yeah, even when you're not on location, like you can be like you're in Tennessee right now. I can literally send you the link, and as I'm shooting, you'll see it in real time, and you can rate it. Capture One knows where, what they're doing. They're going, yeah, they're yeah. they're going bananas now. Um, Reese was asking if I advise using an iPad and wireless transfer for clients to view or tethering hardware. Okay, uh, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, they're both phenomenal systems, whether it be the Air Direct or the Tether Pro. Let me put this down a little bit more so you can see. Um, they're both phenomenal. It just really depends on what the workflow is that you're doing. Um, I'm, I'm a bit of both. If it's portrait work, if it's portrait work, um, sometimes I tend to use the air direct cause it's very sort of freeing for lack of better words. I sound like a hippie, uh, but, but it's very freeing. Um, there's no cables. There's nothing to dangle. There's no risk. If there's a lot of people in the studio, again, that's another solution. Uh, I'm a big fan of the cable itself partially because it is incredibly fast. Um, and let's face it, I mean, even even doing this webinar, for example, I'm hardwired to my modem. Um, wow. Not to say that, you know, my Wi-Fi here isn't good, but God forbid, right? So, you know, even even this, I have a workflow, if that makes sense. Um, mm -hmm. So so I think, uh, you know, hardwired or being hardwired will always be superior to anything wirelessly or Bluetooth or anything that's not, that's not wireless um, or isn't wired rather. Uh, but it really depends on, on the job and what you're doing. Um, I prefer to use a laptop and I prefer to use a cable, but again, I've used the air direct as well. So, I mean, I, I did a shoot an equestrian shoot. Um, and it was great. I don't really shoot horses. Uh, I love them, but, uh, but the issue is I'm obviously in this, was it the stable? Yeah. The horse stable. So uh, it's this horse stable. There's a beautiful wall with sort of like a barn door and I'm trying to get the horse sort of in there. Um, and I, initially, I busted out the cables, and it was great. And then I started thinking, I'm putting my gear and everything at risk because there's a bunch of horses and, I guess, the horse trainers and stuff that walk them. And I didn't know horses need to be walked, but I guess they need to be walked like dogs. Um, and so I started thinking, okay, 
maybe it's time I go with the air direct instead of the cable, even though I love the cable because just for safety reasons. Uh, and sure enough, it was good because a bunch of horses walked by and they could care less that it's an orange cable that I'm shooting. They're just, they're just horses doing their thing. Yep. Right? yep. And so, I, will say, I will say it's a great product. And you know, GC, you and I have talked about this. It, it is, it is not going to replace the cable. It, um, it, because the cable is a direct connection. I just want to kind of like set the expectations of it's, you won't see the same instant transfer or I would say two to three second transfer that you get with a cable. Okay. It does, especially because it's a considerably, probably a larger file size. It will be a little bit slower of a workflow. Right. So that's something to take into consideration. We've seen transfers around nine to 10 seconds, which in my head, nine to 10 seconds, not that bad, but you see, you know, when you're working with clients, that nine to 10 second adds up for 150 headshots. Right. And, and that might, that might stall the actual workflow itself, the efficiency. And that's what I said. It really depends on the gear that you choose really depends on the type of work that you do. If it's a fast paced thing, it's gotta be cable. If it's a much slower paced thing, air direct. I think, you know, do they care about resolution? If it's resolution, then I gotta go cable because then I'm talking 50, hundred megapixels, 150, whatever the case is, whatever the job requires. Um, so really you got to cater your kit or your gear to what the job is and ultimately what the end result is. Um, there's clients that might say, Hey, listen, this is a shoot, you know, for whatever, you know, we're doing, we're doing bottled water. It's a shoot of bottled water, but I only need 72 DPI JPEGs cause it's going on the website and that's that. Then I don't need the cable. I can do air direct cause it's a lot slower. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I'm shooting 18 megapixels, not a hundred, let's say, you know, absolutely. But uh, yeah, so, so you have to be realistic as to your expectations and then ultimately meeting those expectations with the gear that you need. You know, a lot of people always think more is better and that isn't the case. I mean, 90% of the work I do is usually one strobe. It's not even like three strobes or eight strobes. It's one strobe, you yeah. know? So it's, it's working with what you have and then getting the end result. You know, and if you're not happy with the end result because you're tethering, we'll put the camera down, stop, reevaluate, make adjustments, and then continue. Agreed. Excellent advice. And on that note, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. GC, again, I want to thank you for your time and putting no such a great presentation together. It's always a pleasure working with you. We need to, you know, skip work together again. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm always down. But I'm you guys down. have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you back on Thursday, August 26th. Mm -hmm. I got the date right because the other two, I was like, what was their dates? Okay. So Thursday, August 26th, right back here. Uh, we will be doing a follow-up class with Giancarlo. Well, he will, he will actually take a deeper dive look into the differences between that wired and wireless connection just so that, to help you guys make a better informed decision on what works best for your workflow. So without further ado, I will say good night, good afternoon. Thank you again. And Will, thank you so much for your partnership with Amplis. We truly appreciate your partnership. Bye, guys. See you guys. Be good.